really wasn't that long ago that I'd be standing in this room and we'd be making disparaging comments about a particular car maker and we would always be talking about poor performance in crash tests. How things have changed because with the desire we saw a huge shift happen not just for Maruti Suzuki, for the Indian industry and certainly also for Global NCAP. That's where the whole story started. That is why it's such a big deal to be back here talking about another Suzuki product. Alejandro Furas joins me now and uh, he's certainly no stranger to this process, also to our audience, I think. Uh, Ali, thank you. Always good to see you and always good to be a part of such uh, proceedings where you see um, it, this is a voluntary test from Maruti Suzuki, a sentence I didn't think I'd say a few years ago. Uh, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. Thank you for coming, for joining us. It's a big deal because the manufacturer has made a shift and a commit, kind of a commitment to the desire and now they are showing their, co it their real commitment that it's not just a one car event, this is actually a, a whole philosophy change. And with this car, it's definitely confirming the direction of the company that we expect that shortly the rest of the fleet we get the same kind of treatment, the same approach of aiming to a five-star performance. Now, we always understand that this has a lot to do with development cycles and so, just so people watching don't sort of mistake this, it's always about as models come on stream, they keep improving and enhancing their safety uh, generation after generation. Uh, we already saw another shift, like you said, it's also a, a change of strategy for the company because between the time when the desire first came here for the voluntary test and now, we've seen the entire portfolio switching to standard safety equipment becoming much more, um, you know, at a higher level, higher spec level than what it was previously. And then um, the next new product, this one, again, trying to bake in some of that structural safety. Um, this is something that you've always petitioned for and argued for. The fact that it is Maruti Suzuki, the fact that it is the massive market leader doing this, it compels the rest of the market to move quicker, you think? Absolutely. I mean, from our view, the decision from Maruti Suzuki to go into this direction it is definitely putting pressure on the other manufacturers. Uh, Maruti Suzuki, it looks like they are making the, the shift to better safety quite late. But if we take a look at the right picture in terms of when the cars started to be developed like this, we're talking about at least three, four years in the past. So the change actually happened a long time ago. We are seeing now the effects, we're seeing the results at this moment, this point in time. Manufacturers, when, when they're presenting this new car, they're already starting to design and develop the replacement for this car. So that is one thing we need to understand. And, and second, when you have a market leader like Suzuki Maruti, a certain decision making when you already, as a manufacturer, already has the gain of market understanding the message from the consumer side on the relevance of safety and taking a decision on that in such a large market portion. And not just that, the, the, the fleet, the offer they have, they're covering a wide range of vehicles, starting from very, very cheap, small city cars to larger vehicles with a different high performance. So the, the structure, how you design the strategy and structure the different changes in the different platforms, of course, it's going to take much longer than from other manufacturers as well. And considered on top of that, that Zuki Maruti is developing cars in the Indian market just for the, for the Indian markets, while global manufacturers uh, normally bringing platforms from, from somewhere else. We have the same case with uh, Tata and Mahindra, which are specifically for the Indian markets, and they have certain challenges with other manufacturers don't have. And we need to understand as well, so, as these changes or these improvements that we have seen in other local manufacturers as well, are double the significance of just a normal manufacturer or a Western manufacturer, traditional manufacturer, just bringing a, a car with better equipment. Um, something that for us was a game changer is the attention that the manufacturer is putting on the idea or the concept of mm. the consumers being aware of safety. Safety is relevant for the consumer when they're buying a new car. They understood that message and they're reacting according to that. They could have reacted to a three-star performance, but no, they are aiming to excellence, to the five-star, and I think this is extremely important. Coming into this process, the Victoris brand new model, um, of course, it's very important for the company as it brings it to the market. What was your first impression? What was your expectation? And now that the tests are done, what do you think? Uh, the first impression or the first uh, impact on the car was uh, a new car, definitely. But I was not expecting to see certain features, certain uh, technical um, solutions or technical features in the car. Uh, we were gladly surprised for that. And starting with a simple passive safety elements, a good performance and uh, a good structural performance in the frontal test, uh, seeing a good performance in the restraint systems. But on top of that, seeing a car with the equipment of ADAS as optional, 
it's quite surprising because the, the Atlas package of this car is very well equipped, it has a very good offer, it's a robust offer. So this for us, it's, it's a big game changer as well. Uh, from the, if we dive into the performance itself of the, of the different restraint systems, we have seen a robust and good performance of the, of the car in general. So it's a car which is, uh, there's a lot of research behind, a lot of developments, there's investment in the car to make it a good performer in terms of uh, passive safety as well. But uh, as a concept of a safer car, it's not just focusing on passive safety and then the test is the concept of a car is a safe car. It's safety and all the, all the concept of it, the wider range yeah. of the safety concept. Yeah. Um, a good surprise we have seen in the car is that the manufacturers, uh, uh, Suzuki Maruti resolved and, and tried to um, develop a good structure, keeping certain characteristics of their own design of the cars, like for example, certain design on the door and uh, uh, managing to divert the, the shock wave, as we call it in the front of the crash, on two different channels instead of using three channels to to drive the the shock wave which manufacturers normally use three channels and suzuki managed to to do it only in two uh, channels and very well and, and not just very well also uh, they managed to get the shock wave away from the passengers and this is the most important thing you have to do in a in passive safety so um, overall it's a very good surprise we have, we are met with this car robustness overall that you're not getting results with which are kind of on the edge of performance. So robust performances, this is very significant and very important as well, because you never know when things fail, or you never know when the car is, goes a little bit beyond uh, uh, testing conditions, a higher speed, uh, larger uh, uh, passengers. So yeah. all these things are brought in and, and we have all the, the way that the car is designed and the concept behind, you can cover those variables pretty well. This has also happened at a time, and this is the last thing I want to kind of discuss with you a little bit because we again take a step back about that whole strategy piece. You said that process started three, four years ago. Uh, we're starting to see the sort of fruit of it now. There's a, the other thing that's happened in the last three, four years is the, coincidentally, Maruti Suzuki now holds a much more important position in Suzuki's global empire. Mm -hmm. It's also become the more significant manufacturing hub. There's also a new capacity that's coming on stream now, like this car comes out of a brand new plant. So there's more uh, manufacturing volume now for Suzuki in India. And then it's actually starting to make cars for other markets. Uh, we saw the Francs going to Mexico and the Americas. Mm -hmm. We've seen uh, so many of them cross badged as Toyotas going into other markets as well. And uh, that's only going to increase presumably going forward. Um, the fact that, you know, there's also multiple powertrains. This one's a hybrid. Mm -hmm. How, how does that board for the future development? Because uh, Maruti has also announced that it wants to go back to 50% market share in India. Uh, when manufacturers are making such an investment in broadening the, the products, the product range, and broadening also the platforms that they are offering in, it's an investment that, of course, it has to be seen. We need to see some consequence of that. And the manufacturer clearly want to achieve and go back to the 50% or over 50%. I think that's feasible, but what we can see here and very, very clear is a commitment from the manufacturer. It's not, it's a long-term commitment. It's not just to make it a five-star now and then the next round of cars will be less, I mean, or probably not aiming to five stars. There's a, a, a strong commitment, long-term commitment, but not looking at just the Indian market, but looking at the global market. And this is a very significant mm. change because normally we have seen already Baruti Suzuki cars being exported globally, but in the past was more a result of a demand from the, from the uh, let's say, foreign uh, markets. Now it's more like a strategy, it's a corporate strategy. And this is a huge change. It also is going to expose more uh, Maruti Suzuki in India. You, as you said, they have more relevance in the, in the um, uh, empire of, of Suzuki. And that also shows that they have to perform much better. So there's more pressure on them as well, not just to bring the, the technological improvements, but also to perform well according to those. Not just safety, I mean, talking about yeah. in general, in the products uh, in general. And uh, the manufacturer, once again, this uh, strategy, long-term strategy makes sense with the uh, different uh, changes we are seeing in the world, uh, more dominance of power, uh, battery uh, powered electric vehicles, and also the change and the shift globally with the vehicle production, uh, Europe, Latin America and emerging markets. Indian industry is already taking over some of the Latin American markets in Latin America. So the, the, I mean, industry in India is displacing Latin American products in their own markets. Yeah. And that talks very broadly about what we're talking about, I mean, the strategy in long-term penetration. So we've seen in, a, in a, I mean, good, good eyes on the same 
time there would be a lot of pressure on Suzuki to keep the performance. I mean, that's a product quality, safety wise, um, product performance in general. So I think it's a good change, it's a positive change. And we hope that to see a steady progress on this. So it doesn't stay just in the five star, but just a steady progress on, on the next vehicles. The next vehicles, would you like to see this happen with the absolute entry compact as well? What, what, what's the thing yes. that you'd want to see next? Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Normally what we see is the top cars and the most expensive cars getting the top safety features and then manufacturers start to bring those improvements yeah. uh, to a, a little bit cheaper vehicles in the, in the product range. That's what we would like to see. I'm quite optimistic in some of the small platforms we are already starting to see that. Uh, probably the, the part that we would like to see more is the availability of uh, driving assistance technologies or others, as we normally call it, in more affordable platforms, mm. in smaller platforms. In the case, for example, for the Desire, it's uh, the range of platforms that we would like to see more others available there. Uh, our protocols are going to shift the pressure into that direction in the future, but this is probably where the manufacturer should uh, improve a little bit more because there is a demand for those technologies Consumers are willing to pay extra for that for that safety. And we have seen that in emerging markets. And the penetration of that can be, at least in our opinion, is kind of secured already in the inner market for a certain period of time. It's just about making it available. And the good thing with Maruti's development and R&D is that uh, it's also taking Indian conditions yep. into account for things like ADAS. Uh, and Maruti has the economies of scale to do it. So yes, you're right. This is going to be a, a great story to watch develop from here. Yep. Um, great to always have you talk about uh, you know the tests right after they've happened and then also give us a little bit of that sense of analysis. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much for coming and we're actually very happy to be part of this journey.